Okay, so my name is Steven Chin. I'm the Java community manager working for Oracle. You can you can see I'm I'm branded with the Oracle 20th anniversary. Um, so my Twitter handle is Steve on Java. I also run the Java Twitter handle with Yolan. So if you guys see tweets from Java, they might be from me, maybe. Um, and we're going to chat a little bit about um, Raspberry Pis and um, Java gaming and 3D printing. Sound good? No, no, more. You guys just want to watch motorcycle videos, I think. Back to motorcycle videos. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna chat a little bit about those three topics. Um, and we, we have too many stickers here, so you guys have to help us. That's a problem because we need more room on the motorcycles. They are so heavy. yeah, they're very heavy. <laughs> so we need to we need to give you guys stickers. Um, so we'll try to make this we'll try to make this super easy to get you guys to, to get stickers. All you need to do is heckle me. So you can you can ask a question, you can make a comment about me. Um, you can talk about something that's happening in your company. Here is the um, user groups. All right, so who's who's a member of a user group here? Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, a few people. Ah, uh, so which which user group are you a member of? Which which um, Java user group do you belong to? Yes, Okuyama Jug. Very good sticker. <laughs> Does anyone else belong to the Okayama Jug? Anybody else an Okayama Jug member? Raise your hand. E everybody should raise their hand because you're at a jug meeting. <laughs> okay, so very good. I got one more sticker. We're going to keep working on it. Okay, who, who in this room is a Java developer? Java developers. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah, oh, Java. Okay, so which which version of Java do you use in your company? Java six, seven, eight. What? Eight. Okay, very sticker. Good. Yes, <laughs> very good. We have winner. Okay, and then there's 150 Java champions throughout the world. Um, Java champions are folks who talk about Java technology. Um, so I used to be a Java champion, and then I made the mistake of joining Oracle, and now I'm not a Java champion anymore. I'm a Java champion alumni. <laughs> so can does anybody know the name of a Java champion? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Who? Sakuraba-san. Yes. Very good. Very sticker. Good. Got a sticker. So, so Yo Yoichi Sakuraba yep. is a Java champion. He's a Japanese Java champion. <laughs> the only. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. And then we also have um, different Java user groups contributing to the JCP. So does the Okayama Jug contribute to the JCP? Are you a JCP member? Maybe. Not yet. Soon, maybe? Maybe okay, <laughs> something, something to work on. We're counting on you. We're, yes, we're counting on you. Okay, so all of this stuff is is important, and this is what I do for my day job is community management. But I, I think there's something even harder than this work, which is um. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some some retro gaming. So this, this is what the Famcom looks like in the U.S. This is the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, but in Japan, it was red, I think. Red, well, and red and white. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a good thing they changed the colors when they sold in the U.S. and Europe. I think red and white probably wouldn't have been as popular. Like maybe. Coke. <laughs> what? Like Coke. Like Coke. <laughs> yeah, Coke is red and white. Um, this is what it looked like. Actually, the U.S. controllers are horrible because they redesigned them square. And I think the Famcom controllers are more rounded. Right. Who who had a Famcom growing up? Anybody? Oh. 
Wow, wow. Lots of, lots of, very good. Okay, so you guys are in the right place for this presentation because we're going to chat about um, emulation of the Famcom. Um, there were 826 different ROMs produced, so a lot of different games to test. The chipset was made by Rico, but it was a Motorola-based um, chip um, with 3,510 transistors. And there was a CPU, a PPU, a pixel processing unit, and an APU, audio processing unit. And they were they ran at different clock speeds, so to accurately emulate it, you need to synchronize 92 million different synchronization points per frame. So it's actually computationally intensive to do an accurate job of emulating the NES. Um, so the hardest part of this, of course, is testing, right? Software testing is sometimes even harder than writing the software. So I had to I had to play a lot of video games. You guys you guys recognize what did, what did they have this game in Japan Ninja Gaiden? Yeah maybe. Oh. Is that yes or no? Maybe. Not sure. You know? Was this released in the in Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So how do you say it? Ninja? Yukenden. Okay. Ninja Yukenden. Anyone play this? Ah, did you beat it? Did you did you win? Yeah. The boss. Did you get? Did you beat the boss? No. <laughs> no. It, this game's very hard, right? I think this is like one of the top five hardest games ever created. Uh, did you beat it? Ah, oh, sticker. Sticker. <laughs> oh, we get another we sticker. We can give we can give multiple stickers out. Okay, so um, this game is very hard. Mega. Oh, Rockman, right? So you guys play Rockman, but Rockman one very hard, much harder than the later games. Um, and this isn't a Famcom. This is a Super Famcom. But anyone know this game? Ah, uh, Gradius. Gradius. Is this Gradius or R-Type? I can't remember. I think this is Gradius, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, after playing all these games, you reach Nirvana on gaming, which is which is this. <laughs> okay. So who, who knows who knows what this is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's this? Kunop, Kunop. Can you repeat? Um, what's what's this code for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so you get a sticker, and you're since you clearly know video games, we're gonna have a competition. So, you want to compete with me? I'm going to give you this to play. Uh, uh, did you play Super Mario? Yeah, yeah, okay, Super Mario. Okay, so you, you have a gaming console. This is a gaming console made by Steven, and it, it's got Super Mario on it. <laughs> and I, I have a gaming console, too. I, I'm going to use um, NetBeans. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a speed run through the first stage and see who can get to the flag first. So it's I'm going to compete with you, and we see who gets the flag. So you have to... You have to you have to die and then restart, and then we compete. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And no, 
but don't, don't, don't press this. Um, you would just fall down in the in the game. You can continue. <laughs> <laughs> And now um, you, ah. you fall down that you, yeah, Achoo. yeah, exactly. And now you wait until Steven also has a chance to, and, and then you start simultaneously, and whoever wins. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you ready? Yeah. Okay. So count. Three, three two, one. Go. Oh. oh. Okay. So good. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. Oh, oh! <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm setting a a very bad example. But you know, it's if you're gonna die, it's better you die at the beginning, rather than getting too far, right? Oh, oh, oh. So you guys know the secret here. Oh, I got a one up. Oh, yeah. The keyboard is not really the best. Ah! <laughs> oh. So how you doing? You almost there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I made it over halfway through, so I can restart here. Oh, okay. Oh, we got a okay. Sorry, Steve. All right. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. Very, very good. All right. It's so excellent work. So I think we've. I think I should stop challenging Japanese people in video games because I always lose. So you guys, you guys are better at video games than me. We uh, we will pass it around so everybody can try. You want to try? And then yeah. Just yeah. Give so it give. To the next uh, person and then. Give it a try. The next one and everybody can try. <laughs> Do I already have a sticker? Here. For beating Steven yes. in his own game. It's very unfortunate. Oh. Okay. So um, I'm going to... Th what you guys were seeing is a, a game console, which is... It's built using a, a custom 3D printed enclosure that I designed. Um, inside of it is a Raspberry Pi, which is a small embedded board. And um, it's running all Java software, so Java emulation software. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, hardware first, and then the software, and then the 3D printing. So the electronics inside of it is a... Raspberry Pi computer. Who is a Raspberry Pi? Ah, oh, very good. So, what do you guys do with your Raspberry Pi? I think. Let's see. You don't have a sticker yet. Okay. So, what, what, what? what in the white shirt. What, what have you done with your Raspberry Pi? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a Raspberry Pi. What kind what of project did you build with it, or what did you do with the with the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> All right, sticker. <laughs> All right, and who else has has stickers? Sticker, sticker, sticker. Do you have a sticker yet? You have. A st okay, very good. Who else has a Raspberry Pi? Uh, sticker, sticker. Do you have a Raspberry Pi? No, no. Okay, soon, soon. <laughs> a Raspberry Pi's only cost. H how much is it in yen for Raspberry Pi? 6,000 yen? Yes. Do, do you have 6,000 yen? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Sticker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody should get a Raspberry Pi. It's a lot of fun. Um, you hook up GPIO here. GPIO stands for General Purpose IO. So you can hook up like accelerometers or temperature sensors um, or little buttons and things. Um, an SD card is the hard drive. It uses micro USB for power, so normal cell phone charger works. 
Um, you hook up HDMI for a screen, Ethernet, um, USB port. So it's like a little computer, but with the GPIO, you can do more. Does anyone know what these two ports on top are for? So um, these are little ribbon cables which attach. Come on. So one of the people who has a Raspberry Pi must, y you know what it is. You were shaking your head, maybe? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so let me let's let's give a hint. Hold up that thing in your hands. What's that? Camera. Very good. All right. So that one's camera. Give him another sticker. We're we're rewarding people. And the other one is for. Uh, who who doesn't have a sticker? Oh, in the back, maybe. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so in the bl blue shirt, what's what's this? Wha what's this thing on my computer? Or maybe it's easier to show. What's what's this called? So what's what's that? What's this thing here? Called. Display, very good. All right, correct answer. <laughs> so one of them's for a camera, the other one's for a display. Um, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation sells a, a display that's seven inches large. What, what's that in centimeters? Like oh, 10 centimeters, maybe? I don't know. But so it's, it's too big to fit inside of the gaming console. Where, where'd the console end up? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 pass, pass. Is it working? Ch check and make sure it's working. Oh, okay, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the display is too large, so here are some other display options you can do for portable displays, small displays. So you can use um, composite. Um, so this is not very good quality. Um, you can use HDMI, which is better quality, but you need a converter board that converts from HDMI to the LCD signal, so it consumes more power. You can use SPI, the Serial Peripheral Interface, um, but this is a little bit slow, so it's, it's fine for communication, but for graphics, you only get about 10 to 15 frames per second. Um, for the um, Famcom, you need 60 frames per second to run it accurately. Um, and then device tree support, which this is a good option. And what it does is it remaps your GPIO pins to be used as LCD pins. Um, and then you need a board like this, which you can hook up to the GPIO pins. Um, so Adafruit sells this. It's called the Kippa. And it, it's very low power and good performance, but it has a disadvantage. Um, you only have six GPIO pins left over. Okay, so let's see. In the back, maybe black suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how many buttons are on a Famcom controller? The, yeah, yeah, on that. So count the buttons. Okay, wrong, but you get a sticker anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyone else want to take a guess? How many buttons? Oh, oh, ah, oh, good, good, Hachi, yes. All right, very good. So there's eight buttons on the controller, right, because you have the directional arrows, which is, that counts as four buttons. 
So that's a problem, right? We have six GPIO, and we want to do eight buttons. So that's not very good. Anybody remember the um, when you beat the Mario World, and you get the little um, toad, and they say, oh, princess is in another castle. So we, we have a problem. When my daughter played the Mario for the first time, it was on the <coughs> this little gaming console. I gave it to her. She's 13 years old now. And um, when she got this message, she was she was very upset. <laughs> because modern video games, when you beat a world, there's supposed to be dancing and celebration and lots of secret items they give you, right? Not Not this. This is very mean. And I think retro games, they, they build up um, character. Um, OK, so this is the solution I came up with to allow you to use six GPIO pins for eight buttons. So I hooked up the left and the right buttons on the controller to the start. And so when you press start, it's the same as pressing left and right simultaneously. And when you press on um, select, it's the same as up and down. And so um, this way, you just check and see. Because normally, you can't press left and right at the same time, right? You can only press right or left. So by hooking those up together, this is an invalid input normally. And then I can test to start and select buttons um, just using those. If the left and right's pressed at the same time, then it's start. Make sense? Mm. Anybody know why I have diodes here? Okay, well this is I guess this is a computer engineering question, not a or electrical engineering question, not a computer science question. Uh, but diodes only allow the current to flow one direction. And so if you didn't have the diodes here and you press left it would also press right, right? Um, by having the diode here, it means that current can only flow one direction. And so until you press start, it's not going to trigger these two. OK, and then here's the wiring for the Kippa board. Um, I created a button out of a breadboard. It's a very simple button, simple controller. Um, some soldering. This is my messy messy soldering job, and then completed electronics. OK, so now we need some software to run on this. So since I'm the <coughs> Java community manager, of course, it needs to be written in Java. So um, I use the half NES emulator, which is written by Andrew Hoffman. You can find it on GitHub. You can run this on the Raspberry Pi by using remote debugging in NetBeans. This is a great way to run. Java projects on your Raspberry Pi. And then you have Mario running on your on your electronics. So there's a small problem with this. The um, original frame rate, if you run the half NES project, is only six frames per second. So that's not too good. So um, to improve the performance of this, I used the NetBeans profiler and then spent a few weeks trying to profile and fix the code base. Um, and these are some of the things which I improved in the code base. So it used to use Swing Video um, using X Windows. And I rewrote the code so it uses JavaFX instead. Anybody use JavaFX? Oh, oh, one JavaFX developer. That's it? Nobody else? Oh, OK. So maybe maybe instead of doing a Raspberry Pi session, I should give you guys a JavaFX session. <laughs> Next time I come to Okayama, we'll do a JavaFX session. <laughs> OK, but JavaFX is very good for um, doing graphics on desktop. And it's much, much faster than Swing, especially on um, small devices. It has 3D acceleration, 
and direct frame buffer support. Um, I also changed synchronization between CPU, PPU, and APU to be per line instead of per pixel. Um, there's a, it's slightly less accurate, but it's much faster. Um, some bitwise helper functions I um, rewrote. So we had some helper functions where it was doing bit masks, or it was using um, bit shifts rather than um, bit masks. So I rewrote a regeps, which went through and replaced all of the, the helper functions with bit masks. Extracted out PPU operations um, rather than happening once per line to happen once per frame for some things which were happening very often. Replace some of the APU math, um, the audio processing math from doubles to longs. Um, the Raspberry Pi floating point supports, not as quick. Um, does anyone know what unsafe is? Mm -hmm. Maybe, okay. So unsafe is a, um, a bunch of APIs which they're used internally in the JDK. And you're not really supposed to use them, but you can use them for now. And in the future, they might go away. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can do direct memory access using unsafe. And for example, you can bypass array bounce checks with this. Um, it turns out that this actually didn't help. So the just-in-time compiler is good enough that it actually improves performance. Um, this also didn't help either, replacing root loops with system array copy because there was an intrinsic for this. But the last one did help. I changed the audio. So rather than outputting the buffer flush once per frame, it does it once every three frames. So that way it flushes the audio buffer less frequently. And... Um, it improves performance with a slight delay in the um, oop -a -doo, uh, reset. Okay, now it's, it should be happy again. Or did you pause it? Was it paused? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are all the things which I did. Okay. So, three D printing. Who owns a 3D printer here? Oh, very good. What type of 3D printer? Uh, Flash Forge. Flash Forge. Very good. Flash Forge printer. Okay. So, you should go to this guy's house and hang out. Be good friends with him. <laughs> that's that's uh, the Flash Forge printer. Is it working well? It's, do, you, do you like the Flash Forge? Uh, is it, is it good? Yeah. 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 Good one. Okay. This is the printer I'm using, the Ultimaker. Um, Flash Forge is very good as well. Um, the Ultimaker is made by, um, a company in the Netherlands and it uses a Bowden tube, um, style. On the back here is the plastic. Do you print in PLA or ABS? PLA, okay. So PLA is a corn-based um, plastic, and it's it's very good because it's safe for indoor use. There's no fumes, and it, it gives you nice sharp edges, very sharp edges on the model. So I printed this in PLA. Uh, mo all, most of it in PLA. The um, This button here, oh, oh, I'm tripping over my own cord. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not happy again. Okay, sorry. This this button here is um, printed in... Um, uh, bu 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 bu. Am I too close to the camera, Sebastian? Mm -hmm. This button here was printed on a um, dye sublimation printer called the uh, Formlabs. So this this little button was done using... Um, the it's, it's a special resin. When you expose it to ultraviolet light with a laser, then it hardens, and it, it produces smoother prints. So you can feel the button is smooth, and the edges of the case are harder. It's rougher. So I did this using dye sublimation instead, just to give it a better finish. Here, pass it around. 
Um, the software I used for modeling was uh, Fusion 360 from Autodesk. They have a free student license, and they have a free license for hobbyists or um, startups. So I think this is a very good software to use for modeling things because you just specify the dimensions that you want to draw things at, and then you tell it to extrude or to put chamfers or rounded edges. Um, and then you can always go back and make modifications, and it'll update the model um, and redesign it. So this is what the inside of the case looks like. There's a few pieces, and it fits together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. One of the hard parts of the design was coming up with a good, a good way of printing hinges. Um, so the, the hinges on the case, my first attempt at designing this was to use a 20-sided a polyhedron. So like, a, a, you know, kind of like a, a sharp edges. And then when you rotate the hinge, it would stop at, um, you know, a bunch of different angles. So my, I gave it to my daughter to test, my 13-year-old. And she played with it for a while. And after opening and closing it a few dozen times, it was perfectly smooth, just like, a, um, just like I printed a circle. So that, that failed horribly. Uh, anyone play Zelda 2? Link? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Did you beat it? Oh, did you get a sticker yet? <laughs> yes. OK, very good. We can't leave the jug leader. I think, I think we're doing pretty good on stickers. Probably you're the only one. Do you have a sticker? Sticker now? Ah, oh, OK. We have one, one person. Oh, and then you, you don't have a sticker either. Ah, oh, very good. OK, so we have two more people to get. <laughs> okay, so the the hinge design uses two shapes that are um, circumscribed. So what what's this shape? What type of shape is that? Triangle, very good. Okay, sticker. <laughs> okay, so it takes two triangles, and um, they're slightly different sizes. You can see there's a little gap here. And so instead of it being a perfect circle at the edge, it's actually sl a slightly um, oblong triangle like this. So that it's a triangle with rounded um, edges. And when you rotate it, Every 120 degrees, it fits perfectly. But when you're 60 degrees off, you have a little bit of overlap. See, so this is the overlap. And um, inside of the tool, Fusion 360, um, it tells you the overlap. And it was exactly 28.254 cubic millimeters. So you can modify this in the model and then change the amount of overlap to produce different tensions. And if you, if you play with the hinge, you'll notice when it's fully closed, it works well. And then as you open it, it has a little bit of resistance. And then we get all the way open, then it stays open. Um, so that's the design of the hinge, which it works well in plastic because plastic stretches slightly. But if you um, have any sharp corners, those will get smoothed out by the motion. But stretching is fine. It can stretch and go back to the original shape. Um, this is the software, Cura. Um, so this is open source software. What software do you use? Slicer or? Uh, I use Duplicate. Duplicate? Oh, MakerBot Replicator. Okay. Oh, it's simply 3D. Okay, very good. Um, so Criara's open source software produced by the Ultimaker guys. You can use it on other printers as well. Um, this is the printing process. So um, this is the Ultimaker printing out the bottom. 
Here are some of the different pieces. Um, here's all of the pieces together. So how many pieces are there total? Ten. Wrong. <laughs> OK. <laughs> sticker. Come on, Sebastian. Last sticker. All right, anyone else want to try? There, there's one hiding behind me. Don't forget that one. You say nine? Nine, no. <laughs> Okay, we're almost we're almost there. It's all right. So it's it's not nine. It's not ten. Anyone <laughs> anyone else wanna? <laughs> Eleven. Very good. Okay, get another sticker. Okay, and then here's the buttons. Um, so you can see the um, they have to kind of stretch out the pins to make them fit inside the case. Um, soldering to the buttons is tricky, but it's possible. Um, inside the case, you put the Raspberry Pi down first, and then the battery, and then um, hook up a little board here for the. Um, this is charges the battery and also provides the um, micro USB. This is the Kippa, which we showed earlier. Um, these little pieces of plastic go inside to hold the the buttons. Here's the rest of the buttons and the um, audio board and amplifier. And then the LCD cable goes through here and you coil it up so that it doesn't break when it rotates. And then this hooks up to the LCD screen. Um, these are the two pins on the side. And on top, there's a little cutout here. And that cutout matches a, um, a little locking pin that goes inside. So I designed the case. So everything is printed out of plastic. There's no metal parts, no screws. Um, you do have to remove a little bit of material here and a little bit of material here. But other than this, the whole design prints without any supports. So it's very easy. Um, and then you can slide the top in and then little locking pins across the top. And then you have a completed Raspberry Pi gaming system. Okay, and I have a final video. All right, anyone play this game? Ah, uh, yes, a few people. So did you beat it with getting all the items? Because there's two endings. There's a good, the the normal ending and the good ending. So I think you have to get all the all the items, and then you and you get the good ending. And then you find out your character was actually a a girl. Because it is a spacesuit, but you can't tell. So, you know, this is one of the earliest video games which probably had a female main character. Um, so I think this is a good example for programmers. We should have more women in our industry. Um, my daughter is a, a young programmer. She helps me with teaching classes and also testing. That's her testing my gaming stuff. Um, so if you want to try this project, go to Thingiverse. Or it's also one of the projects in the book, Raspberry Pi with Java. And we have a couple copies of the book to give away. So to figure out who gets the copies of the book, Sebastian and I are both going to each ask a question from our presentations. And whoever gets the question right gets the book. And to make this more fair, uh, Ito-san is going to translate the question. <laughs> Okay, so the, my question is um, for, hold on, we'll go back to the picture. Okay, so in this example, I explained I used diodes and a button. 
so this this works most of the time that left and right and start are connected but there is one case where it doesn't work so what combination of buttons would you push to make um, to make it not work can you explain Oh, well, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, normally there should be a ground right here. And the left and right buttons are also going to be hooked up to ground. So this is, this is only partially wired. But the main the main question is, um, you know, when you press start, it presses left and right at the same time. So what combination of buttons can you press where it's going to miss an input? Okay, but you can't you can't press left and right because they're opposite. Anyone else want to try to guess? <laughs> Very difficult. Very difficult. Okay. Well. All right. Anyone else want to? Oh. Oh. Okay, so while they're thinking about this, ask your question, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I got a little bit simpler question from my presentation, but you have to remember it. So, um, in JuxRS, there is a helpful component which can be used to create links using JuxRS um, features and which looks up uh, the information you program in JuxRS and then to create URIs. So, in, in particular, there's one particular class to do that, can you tell me the name of that class which I used in my presentation? Uh, 
Uh, no, Googling, Googling is not allowed. <laughs> Can you tell me the name of the class which helps you to create your uh, eyes? The class which I injected using at context. Everybody's searching in Google to <laughs> <laughs> for Jacques Arrest classes. <laughs> yeah, just just raise your hand if you know it. You're oh, right. Oh, very, very good. good. All right. <laughs> you get the first book. Okay. So Give him a round of applause, please. That's very good. <laughs> All right. So did anyone think of an answer for this? Anyone want to try? Otherwise, I'll ask a different question. Oh. Okay. So the answer, the answer to this one is if you press start and left at the same time, then it sees start because it, it can't see the left since left is already pressed, right? Pressing start presses left and right. So if you press start and left, it just sees a start, not a left. Can you explain? Yeah. Um, because once you press start, then it's going to press both of these. And same thing, you can't press start and write at the same time. So, different question. Does anyone remember the type of material I use for 3D printing this case? Ah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get a book as well. Um, thank you everyone very much for coming to the presentation. Um, we're very short on time. We have to give up the room, but why don't you say a few final words?